She's Doctor Who's right-hand lady, and we wish her a happy birthday, Lala Ward. You don't have to shake hands with me, of well, course. Well, it was that now. bit about I mean, being can... marginally slimmer that did it. Can you, you see can... around me, too? You can. Uh... Can you see around me? Well, <laughs> if the wind's in the right direction. No, Happy birthday, Lala. Thank you. Lala isn't your, your real name, is it? Sarah's my real name, but I've always been called Lala, so I don't really go into that description anymore. Hmm. And how old are you today? I'm 29. And proud of it. And proud of it. Yeah. How long have you been in the acting game? Well, I went to drama school when I was 16 and left when I was 19, and I've been doing it since then, so I suppose it's 10 years, really. Well, Cyril says that uh, his career it sort of led him, and he's happy with it, um, that it's led him, mm. uh, as well he might be. Uh, it might have gone another direction. He might have been just as happy. What about you? Well, I suppose my mind might have gone in the direction of drawing, but I thought I could do that at the same time, and I've managed to do that as well. So I've really sort of kept at what I've always wanted to do, which was drawing, and still done acting, which I decided I wanted to do somewhere along the line. Well, I, I know that you, you're leaving Doctor Who, because mm. that's already been announced in the papers. Is that your decision, that you feel that you get stereotyped? I don't think it's only for me. I think it's better for the series as well, if they change the people in it. I mean, it's nice to keep the Doctor for as long as possible. I think it's better for the series if the girl changes from time to time. Yeah. Again, are, are you happy that you've taken over that role, or do you think mm. it will limit you in the roles that you could take subsequently? No, I loved doing it. I adore doing it. I'd be very lucky I did the Hamlet for the BBC in between, which has sort of changed the image a bit. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I don't see why it should limit one. As an actress, do you feel that you, you should be doing more classical roles no. and give you more satisfaction? No, I like doing all sorts of roles. I don't feel that there's it's a sort of English thing to feel you ought to be doing masses of theatre and tons of classical stuff and all that. And if you're not, you're not a proper actress. Mm. I think that's a lot of rubbish. I think Doctor Who's frightfully hard and complicated to do well. <laughs> well, anything that's worth doing, worth mm. doing well, and obviously it's difficult to do. Do you feel uh, that your life would have been more fulfilled, Cyril, if you'd made Privy Councillor become a right honourable? There's time yet, you know. <laughs> can, can you do it with the crowd you're with, though? Oh, yes, certainly. I mean, uh, uh, what, we've... David Steele is a Privy Councillor, Joe Grimmond is a Privy Councillor, Jeremy Thorpe's Privy Councillor. But you've been so, whipping them in so hard, they must have all their backs up. I mean, can a oh, whip well. be a popular man? Well, I mean, it's, I, w I was only whipped for about 12 months anyway, and um, uh, I think a whip can be popular if he's efficient, and of course I was efficient. <laughs> Once again, the well-known modesty coming from the <laughs> Lala, you were talking about being an illustrator. Is it mm. illustratrice? Oh, I don't think it's anything. I think mm. she's an illustrator. But I, you always... Which I came draw. first with you, easy. drawing or acting? Drawing came first because I could do that when I was sort of little on my own. I've always done drawing. Well, let's have a look at uh, some of the examples of your drawing. <laughs> These are taken from a book called Astrology for Dogs and Owners by William Fairchild. That's one of the dogs. I don't know whether that's a Leo or a Virgo dog. It's a cancer dog. It's a right? cancer mm. dog. And certainly <laughs> looks it. And um, the Astrology for Cats as well. You've done the illustrations for that. And the thing about that is the, the forewords to both those books are by a gentleman who's called the Astrologer to the Stars, and his name is Frederick Davis. <laughs> no expense spared on this show, a chair and everything. That's right. It's tremendous, isn't it, Frederick? Well, we predicted it wouldn't be here. Right? <laughs> it's, it's nice to see you, and uh, obviously the first thing one asks somebody like you is, if you're so smart, if you can tell the future, why don't you do the treble chance on the pools next week or a week in which there's going to be no other winners, win yourself for half a million and retire? Well, I must tell you a funny story. Recently in Baltimore in America, I was asked to appear at the racetrack and make predictions for the next day and also for the Preakness. So I picked Codex would win the Preakness, which it did, but I wouldn't put $10 on another horse. So that's, so that's how much confidence you have in your own... I couldn't believe, actually, that I had uh, picked it. But it's, I don't think it's right for astrologers to uh, go into betting and uh, predicting horse races and things like that. Um, otherwise, we'll be... There's an ethical restriction, you think, there? Not, not particularly. I think otherwise we'd become so rich that we wouldn't do the work we're meant to do, which is really to help other people have a fuller life and have more fun while they're on Earth. That's very altruistic, isn't it, Cyril? 
Mm. Do you yeah, believe that? Why are you looking at that doubtful I, I, I way? I was intrigued. I was wondering if a fella who tips the winner in a race and then goes and backs something else, I, I thought perhaps it was of Irish descent or something. <laughs> I just have a little Irish in me. <laughs> <laughs> on my grandmother's it's side. It's a nasty, foul slur, that is, on Morgan's winners. <laughs> Are they winners? I thought they were just tips you gave, not winners. Oh, yes. Well, winners is a, is a sort of euphemism, if you like. Yes. Yeah. A slight ex hippable, we call it. Do you? Yeah. I'll take your word for that. Yeah. <laughs> you must tell me what it means after the show. I'll spell it out for yeah. you later. Frederick, um, it's their birthdays today, and I know that we've given you prior information. Can you can you do something first of all on, on Cyril, or have you done anything on Cyril? His no, chart? I did a chart for Cyril because it's his birthday, of course. He's and extremely rotund as well. It might be. It's the right shape. You well, know it's the right up. shape to be of cancer. Cancer is the moon child. It's ruled by the moon, and so many people born under the sign take on a lot of water and look like the moon. I mean, you're like the man in the moon. You're carrying it's a lot of water with you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went before I came off. <laughs> I could have asked if you wanted to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this year is interesting because of the time of your birth. No, your... I was going to ask you, do you mean that appearance is governed by when you're born? Oh, very much. Very much. But it's interesting that you see Leela... No, no, no. How can you say that? We're born on the, born same, the same day. We're born on the same day. But you're the full moon, she's the new moon. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Anyway, go on about Cyril's... Yes, it's a whole combination of things. For example, your moon is in Scorpio, which even though you're very gentle and friendly outwardly, deep down inside you're very strict with your convictions. Very much like Jimmy Carter, even though he's Libra and he looks very, <laughs> no, he looks very gentle, he's very strong underneath because of that Scorpio influence. So you're not the nice fellow you're making yourself out no, no. <laughs> And over the next couple of years... Um, yes, the future for Cyril. Uh, he's likely, uh, you're likely, Cyril, to uh, reach many of your goals that you've sought after, even for the last 12 years. Things that you've tried to put into action will actually happen in the next two years. Sure. So this is a very happy period for you. He's not going to change parties again, I No, think. Terry, I'm going to make you the Minister of Entertainment. That looks like a good future for Cyril. What it's about Lala? Now, Lala... We'll give that one to Cyril, will we? Of course. Thank you very much. Yeah. Kind of you. Good luck. Yeah. And then, uh, Lala, she's cancer, but she has Leo rising, which is the sign of the actress or the actor, very much like yourself, Terry, the, the Leo, the performer. Well, my and Leo is not rising. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> this is a family show. <laughs> Leela, being cancer, likes to take entertainment into the home. It's very much concerned with the home because television actually takes entertainment into the house, so the family sticks together. It's a very sort of uh, good example of cancer and Leela. You see, you're not telling me anything about Lala that I, I didn't, wouldn't know, just knowing that she was an actress. Right. No, um, her talents as an artist are because of the third house and I, I did ask her before the show and she said yes that she does like to do small delicate embroidery and things like this. Not delicate but... Um, <laughs> yeah. Clumsy embroidery. Clumsy embroidery. <laughs> well, well I, as you know she's, she's getting the elbow from Doctor Who. And, you have uh, such a charming way of putting it. Very good. <laughs> it's not true of course she's leaving Doctor Who. What do you think the future holds for Lala as an actress or an illustrator? Well, she'll always do both because she likes to be involved with two things. She has Mars in Gemini, so she has a lot of energy. Uh, there's almost a tendency to want to have two boyfriends at one time, oh, but she's God. loyal. Can't cope with one. What yeah, do you mean? Which is, which is loyal once she has one. There is a tendency to um, be a little um, flirtatious, but this is part of her star charm. Is this true? <laughs> no, no, not really. Oh, she does, she doesn't agree yeah, with you, Fred. Yeah. Yeah. No. Huh? I'm not flirtatious. Well, of course, there's not too many people who admit to being flirtatious. Is flirtatious right, I'm is a terribly flirtatious, all right. <laughs> flirtatious, but not is thing you, not flirtatious is a thing you can be without knowing it. Is it? Look is at it? you, Cyril. Goodness. <laughs> of course, it depends with what you're flirting or with <laughs> whom you are flirting. That's <laughs> playing with fire. Mm. Mm. Yes, cancer does like to have one person. A loyal, yes. a loyal creature is love. But until you find the right one, you still have to flirt. What about a career? Oh, Where's it going oh, to well, go? Part well, being a woman, that's not to do with being in cancer, is it? <laughs> Give the fella a chance. No, here, I mean, so. you say until you find the right one, you've got to flirt. Well, that's part of being a woman, isn't it? 
He's taking a very chauvinistic line there, Lance. Lots men flirt. I mean, men flirt. Well, all right, it's part of being a man as well. Right, there you go. This started out as an interview with Frederick Davis and become an argument between Cyril Smith and Lala Ward. Let's get on to something more uplifting. What about my stars? Well, as a Leo, th this is the sign of romance and theatre and fun. <laughs> and it's that so Leo is the sign of sexual happiness. It's all... Yeah. 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 That's right, you, you can see it. You I can that. see it in your eyes. <laughs> Uh, because you're happy is making other people happy, that's why you have such fun with your shows and things, you know, entertaining other people. Uh, I always say that Leos, when they make love, like to dress up. You know, because of the... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> like, Thank you. like Tarzan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> old old Peter. <laughs> swinging off the chandelier tree. <laughs> But um, you have your moon in Scorpio also, which gives you determination to succeed in, in life. And right at the top of your chart, which again gives you the success with the public. Um, it's interesting also that Saturn in Aries um, will give you a tendency to want to worry about things and take things seriously, even though you won't let anybody else know. You're very sensitive <laughs> inside. You're very, in fact, a very warm and wonderful <laughs> human being. <laughs> Yeah, it's like pulling your stomach sure. in when you see a woman. Yes, I'm pulling in the stomach when you see a woman. Exactly. Very sensitive. You're not trying, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Frederick, I'll tell you what. Let's go down and join our audience and see if we can find some. Uh... Is guinea pig? The... <laughs>